Hey guys, Dr. Brown here with Kubo Math, and tonight we're working a, an area problem. We have two circles. Now, you, you may have to have a little bit of an imagination. Those circles I put up here, they're not to scale, okay? Just for us folks that like this to uh, be geometrically correct, if I can say that. All right, we're trying to find the area of this shaded zone up here. Okay, how would we accomplish that? Few things, few observations. We know the radius of this larger circle is five centimeters, units or centimeters, could be inches, feet, miles, whatever. Well, we'll say centimeters. So that's five centimeters. The radius of this other, the smaller circle, is three centimeters. The other observation I can make is this radius, this line going down to touching, you know, the uh, intersecting with the circle, and this radius, it's not 30, that's 3 centimeters, centimeters, okay, it's a 90 degree, which means this comes along out here, and that's also 3 centimeters, which makes that line 6 centimeters, okay. So those were just a few observations I made early on. I always like to, since I'm dyslexic, I like to graphically evaluate something. So let's say this area, I can get out of your way here. So that area up top, again, you'll have to use a little bit of an imagination here. So that banana looking thing is supposedly this up here. So that area is equal to what? Well, I, have, I noticed that this bisects that the area formed by that entire circle. So I could say that, well, okay, that area of the semicircle minus, if I knew what this little clear spot right here was, I could say that area of the semicircle minus that would equal the area up top that's shaded. Well, if I were to draw a line right to that point, what is the length of that line? It's the radius of that larger circle. Same here. So I know the length of that line and the length of this line, they're five. So now I have a sector. I have something that looks like a, a pie. If I knew the area of that minus this triangle that's been formed here, then I would have, you know, if I subtract that triangle from that, I have just that area right there. So that, the area of the semicircle minus um, this parentheses of the sector minus the triangle is really saying this semicircle minus that area right here that's formed by this sector would give me the thing that looks like a banana over here. <laughs> the shaded spot. Well, I better shade that. Okay, that's the shaded spot. Well, let's fill in the blanks here. What's the area of a circle? Pi r squared. Now that's the, I'm going to denote this by the three, the radius of the three size triangle, minus what's the area of a sector? Um, one half r squared theta. Okay, and the radius that we're talking about here is this length of five. So I'm going to put a sub five here minus the area of this triangle. Well, 
if I knew the angle here, we'll call it A, if I knew that angle, then I could, uh, sorry, if I knew this angle A, it's the same angle, but here we're talking about radians, here we're talking about degrees. If I knew that angle, then I could, since it's included in the sides, we'll call this one uh, B, this side B, and we'll call this side C. And I'll call these angles A, B, and C. So this is side C. And if I knew that, then one half B times C sine of A would give me the area of that triangle. And that, if we could go through those things, that would give me the area of this banana looking thing, the shaded area. So what is the radius of the small circle? It's three. So that three squared is nine. Oh, by the way, I don't want the area of the entire circle, half of it, right? So I need to divide that by two. So I have three squared is nine centimeters squared, and I should, so that's nine over two pi centimeters squared. Three squared, which was this radius, pi r squared over two, nine pi over two centimeters squared minus one half this radius, or we're looking up here, well, it's the same radius, five squared is 25, theta, I'll just leave it theta for right now, and that's centimeters squared, five times five, or five centimeters squared. Okay, minus one half uh, B, we're calling this side B, it, it, it equals five, C equals five, so five times five centimeters gives me 25 centimeters squared times sine of A. Okay, we're gonna to have to find A and then convert that to radians here. All right, uh, how are we gonna do that? We know this side, this side, and of course this side is six. Three plus three. Hey, we know three sides, law of cosines. Okay, so we have A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus two B C cosine A. So we're gonna solve this for cosine A. So we're gonna subtract A squared minus B squared minus C squared equals minus two B C cosine A. And now we're gonna divide both sides by negative BC. I'm just gonna write that right here. Negative B, negative two BC. And that equals cosine A. So if I wanna know the angle A, A equals cosine inverse of A squared minus B squared minus C squared divided by negative 2bc. All right, so if I go through that, cosine inverse of a, which was, oh, see, a, that's a, sorry. That's the angle a, and the opposite of that is side a. I should write it like that. C, the side, angle C, the side C is opposite it. Angle B, the opposite is B. Hopefully you were looking at the screen going, Whoa, that's wrong. Okay, all right, A squared, 36. Six squared is 36, minus B, which was five squared is 25, minus five squared, which is 25, divided by negative two times B times C. So five times five is 25, and two times 25 is 50. Okay, so if I take cosine 
I think all of this comes out to be cosine inverse of, I don't think I wrote that down, I think it's 0 0.28. And that comes out to be A equals cosine inverse of 0 0.28, it comes out to 73.74 degrees. Let me just verify that just a minute. 0.28 cosine inverse. Yep, that's it. All right, so now we know this sine A, we're taking the sine of 73.4 degrees, which is 0 0.96. Okay, now we got to fill in the blanks for this guy, for theta. So if I have 73.74 degrees, I know that radians is to pi as degrees are to 180. So radians equals degrees times pi over 180. So 73.74 pi divided by 180 degrees equals so many radians, and that's 0 0.41 pi, okay? All right, so we can take this number, theta now is 0 0.41 pi, okay? All right, so the area of the banana, that's, that area is 9 halves pi centimeters squared, and that's centimeters squared on every unit. And you'll notice I've got a 1 half, a 1 half, a 1 half, so let me pull the 1 half out. That's 9 halves, that's 9 pi centimeters squared minus, now I'm distributing the negative sign to the inside, negative 25 times 0 0.41 pi centimeters squared. Now negative, negative is plus, and the one half's out here, 25 times 0 0.96 centimeters squared. Okay, so that area of the shaded banana equals, with the rounded numbers, you'll get 10.03. If you don't round them, you'll get 10.05 centimeters squared. Actually, it'd be 10.049s, but anyway, you get the idea. All right. Nice little trig problem there in geometry. So uh, utilize the uh, law of cosines. But I will say this. That you noticed in the beginning I formulated my plan. What am I going to do? How am I going to walk through this? These are the things you really want people to understand because this allowed us to solve the problem by having the logic skills to understand what we're trying to do. And for me, I like to put that in graphical terms. I do that if I'm working with statistics, I do it, to, you know, Z tables, you name it. I try to get it into a graphical format. Now, some people that are not dyslexic like me like tabular data. That's okay, whatever works for you to lay out your logic before you start. Okay, and then work through the plan and see if it, it all makes sense. Keep the units aligned so you can make certain you're adding and subtracting things that are like apples to apples or oranges to oranges. Okay, that's all for now. Why are we doing this? Hey, together we're trying to build a better tomorrow and do that through math. That's all for now. We'll talk to you guys next time. Keep studying. Thanks.